This is CES Tech Talk. I'm James Kotecki, bringing you one of my favorite C-Space studio interviews from CES 2024. I had a lot of great conversations in Las Vegas, and I know you're going to like this one, so enjoy. Welcome back. You're in the C-Space studio with me, James Kotecki. We are together at CES 2024, and we're not alone. We're joined by Neha Singh, the CEO of Obsess. Thank you so much for coming and sharing some insights me, with us today. Uh, Obsess, I love the name Obsess. <laughs> I'm obsessed with the name Obsess, the best company name maybe of any of the folks that we're going to interview today. But what is Thank Obsess? You. Um, yeah, so Obsess is an immersive shopping platform. Our mission is to reinvent the online shopping interface. So if you think about any e-commerce website today, right, um, you have a grid of thumbnails on a white background, whether you're shopping for fashion, beauty, any category, it's exactly the same as buying toothpaste on mm -hmm. Amazon, right? Like yes. the interface looks the same. And this interface was created 25 years ago to sell books, uh, but it hasn't changed since then. So what Obsess is doing is creating immersive shopping experiences that really put the consumer um, in the experience of the brand, mm. in a whole 3D branded environment. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sort of like bringing gaming into shopping. So the same kind okay. of interface you play in games, which is full 3D environments, you can mm -hmm. browse through them, navigate through them. Um, we are bringing that into shopping. Yeah. So are we talking about uh, doing that on a traditional flat screen in VR, AR, or all of the above? Um, all of the above, but the majority of our users are on their mobile devices, so that's okay. where we are mobile first, mobile optimized, and it's all accessible via the web, so you don't just open a link from Instagram, mm -hmm. it'll open right there in the in-app browser and Instagram, yeah. um, or an email, SMS mm -hmm. on the website, so it's super easy to access, making VR essentially yeah. very accessible to users and to brands, uh, but also um, more recently, we launched on the Oculus Meta Quest last year, um, and we are launching with the Apple Vision Pro in February. Great. Um, and so um, walk me through maybe a little bit more about what this experience would be like. Um, maybe, I don't know if you are able to share one specific brand or name or maybe just generic, generify it for the purposes of this conversation, but um, I want to buy something that, that you're helping to make me obsessed with. Um, yeah. What am I actually experiencing? Yeah, absolutely. So we work with uh, brands from a variety of different verticals. We work with fashion brands like um, Dior, J. Crew, Ralph Lauren, Crocs. We work with beauty brands like K-18, L'Oreal, Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, we work with CPG brands. We work with Disney. Um, so to give you one specific example, we launched with Crate and Barrel recently in sure. November, and they created a virtual store that was based on their new flagship store that they opened um, in New York and Flatiron. And essentially, you know, this is a very fantastical version of that store. It's yeah. not like a, the real store. So you start off with this bird's eye view over Manhattan in the fall, and then you kind of like go in, and then you have this photorealistic environment that is fully created in 3D, mm -hmm. where you feel like you're transported into a version of that store yeah. instead of just seeing a grid of thumbnails of yeah. products. And then you can actually go into the living room, and you can see um, couches, and you can press a button to change the entire color scheme and mm -hmm. change different products. Then you go into the dining room and there's this um, whole sort of like all the plates kind of flying off the shelves and okay. creating this beautiful tablescape and then you can actually click on any product and see all the details mm -hmm. and add it to your cart right there. It. Um, so it's a very interactive experience. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our experiences also have games uh, mm -hmm. where uh, you know you're learning about the brand or you're learning mm -hmm. about products at every step as you um, essentially experience the store and that mm -hmm. engages customers even further. And it seems like that would also have a, not just the kind of novelty and excitement and intrigue factor, which would all be there, but also utility factor too. So I, I can literally see how these plates look on this table as opposed to you know, the traditional e-commerce experience yeah. where you're describing where it's kind of two different squares and it's hard for me to picture what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. The contextual piece that this kind of shopping offers is hugely important because in traditional e-commerce, you're essentially devoid of context. And yeah. what that contextual piece also does, another point besides what you mentioned, um, is sort of, it makes you see things that you weren't necessarily looking for. So mm. when you go to a store, that often happens, right? Like you have yeah. your shopping list, but you might see something else. In e-commerce, that typically doesn't happen because it's very directed. Yeah. Uh, but here, what we often see is that our average order value from our virtual stores is higher than typical e-commerce because people might notice something that they weren't necessarily looking for and then they purchase it. Can you talk to me a bit more about the psychology, and it may be brand dependent, of you know creating something that seems like a store? Because if you're creating what you're talking about, you could theoretically yeah. create any kind of environment, right? So with Crate and Barrel, you said it's kind of like their flagship store, but it's a more fantastical version. But yeah. it's still anchored in the concept of being a store. Not every brand might necessarily need yeah. it to be a store. 
So how do you think about that psychologically and what, what, yeah. what you're aiming for there? Yeah, absolutely. So we want to enable brands to express their creativity in whatever way makes sense for the particular collection, for the particular you know season or brand. So we actually do have lots of customers who create completely fantastical environments mm -hmm. that don't look anything like their um, you know, retail mm -hmm. stores. Um, we actually launched um, a virtual store for Taylor Swift as well mm -hmm. in November, and that is a Christmas tree farm, which is oh. where like she grew up and the products are, you basically shop them off. If of my Christmas daughter is watching tree. this, she is going crazy right now. <laughs> yeah, check it out on her website. Uh, but yeah, we have customers who have created underwater like experiences okay. and like you can create a planet if you want. Sure. Um, yeah, many of our customers like in beauty, they want to talk about the science behind their products and so you're in a lab. Yeah. So it's totally dependent on mm -hmm. what makes sense mm -hmm. and uh, we can also test that with the data that mm -hmm. we have, like what works and what doesn't. And are you the team who's actually, you know, digitally creating the look of this? You have graph designers or folks to kind of scan products and create three-dimensional models of them. That's what Obsess is bringing to the table. Um, yeah, so we provide the software platform that all of this 3D rich technology runs on on a web browser. Yeah. And we often also provide the services to actually create the environment. Yeah. Um, in some cases, our brands might have their agencies do it or mm -hmm. they might their interior retail designers yeah. might do it. Otherwise, we can also do it. Yeah. Um, typically, we get creative direction from the brand, though. It's interesting what people are able to do even with smartphones these days as far as scanning an object and then you can have a 3D version of that object on your phone that you can interact with and it looks really pretty good, yeah. right? And maybe for your purposes, you might still need a graphic designer to kind of come over top of that. But as a starting point, yeah. it's not bad. So I imagine that there's going to be increased ubiquity for this kind of uh, use case. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we firmly believe that the future of the internet is 3D because ultimately, you know, our real world is 3D. The yeah. reason we are used to these flat screens and it has just been because of limitations of technology, mm -hmm. right? But now as chips are getting more yeah. powerful GPUs are processing faster like our digital interface becomes closer and closer to the real world mm -hmm. real world is you know visual it's all around us it's 3d and ultimately our digital yeah. interface will become very much like that and these are all the starting points to that ultimate future where you can now start to easily scan products in 3d you can have 3d environments that are running on your phone and ultimately you'll be able to you know step into them or augment your reality which we all you know, has been over the last like couple of years has yeah. been the starting point. It's interesting to think about because some some people might think about VR as a place to get lost in, right? You you put on the goggles and you don't even need to buy clothes or furniture because <laughs> you live your entire life there. It sounds like what you're describing is maybe something a bit more nuanced and balanced, which is using those environments as a way to bring back to the real world something yeah. that you want and how to create the real life you know, reality of what you actually might want in your life. Yes, at the moment, like all the products in our experiences are all physical products. So ultimately what you're buying is something real that you're getting in hand. Yeah. Um, so we talked obviously a lot about AR, VR. Um, another buzzword, the buzzword perhaps, <laughs> is AI here at yeah. CES 2024. How are you thinking, are you thinking about using AI in any interesting or novel ways that you want to highlight? Yeah, absolutely. So we have actually incorporated Gen AI in our production process of these experiences. So for in the cases where we are designing the experiences for brands, what Gen, Gen AI has helped us do is we can now create so many options very quickly for brands and they can be like, okay, I like this, I don't like this, yeah. combine things. And before we had to do all of that in 3D and doing that in 3D takes much longer. Mm -hmm. So now if we can actually get that whole process down with the help of AI, you know, and finalize what the brand wants, because because, you know, as you even asked earlier, there's so many creative options here. Yeah. And um, that has actually cut down our production time and our go-to-market time mm -hmm. for, um, for virtual stores. And then the other thing that we are using it for is to create more content in stores. So mm -hmm. we see from our data that the more content we can add to these experiences, the more higher the purchase conversion rate is. Yeah. Um, so for example, like one of our stores is a baby uh, registry. And so there um, you can plug your due date and it will uh, use Gen AI to find all the names that are most common for oh, okay. that date and things like that. And so you can imagine the possibilities of what before somebody would have to kind of do manually on the brand side mm -hmm. to produce this content. Now it's yeah. like all automated and we can make the experience more interesting. So you mentioned a lot of great brands that you're already working with. So obviously all of this is here. Um, what are you most excited about for what's next? Is there kind of a, a new, I mean, obviously, you know, Apple's technology is maybe potentially the big one for the year, but is there is there a piece of technology or a thing that you're kind of waiting to click into place to kind of take you to the next level? 
Yeah. Um, so for us, the biggest sort of next big shift in this on the horizon is personalization. Mm. And obviously, personalization has been a buzzword regularly in e-commerce. But what it means in a 3D space is that we are like you can walk into a virtual store and it could greet you like hello James mm -hmm. it, you would have a um, you know products based on what your purchasing history is based on what your interests have been mm -hmm. by browsing other places um, and the complexity there is about rendering this dynamically in 3D for every person mm -hmm. um, and so that's a technology we are building now and that's really ultimately our vision and yeah. whatever ultimate device you will experience that on we want the experience to be personalized yeah. to you today the experience that you get is the same as what everybody mm -hmm. else is getting. And that's going to change. And, and do you have uh, other human characters, like an, an, an AI shopkeeper in there that's going to interact with me? Or is there a philosophy around that? Or is that also just kind of brand dependent? Yeah, so we actually do, we can do it in a few different ways, but one of the ways that's super successful and people really engage with is having real people there as avatars who are shot on a green screen background. Mm -hmm. And so we often have like influencers or the brand designer mm -hmm. like in, introducing you and welcoming you into the experience. Oh, okay. And that gets super high engagement. Yeah. And then now what we're also doing is creating more like uh, 3D avatars of, mm -hmm. um, you know, influencers who can be in the space. Mm -hmm. We also have AI um, sales yeah. associates who can help you answer yeah. questions. And if you get Taylor Swift in that Christmas tree farm, <laughs> my daughter will never leave. That would have um, been And we're looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Neha Singh, CEO of Obsessed, thank you for joining us in the C-Space studio today. Thank you so much, James. Well, I hope you enjoyed that conversation from CES 2024. That's our show for now, but there's always more tech to talk about. Hit that YouTube subscribe button, leave a comment, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartMedia, or wherever you're getting this show. And get more CES at ces.tech. That's ces.tech. I'm James Kotecki, talking tech on CES Tech Talk.